Welcome to FemFlex Friday. I'm Linda Murray, along with my host, co-host, Alina Popa, and we have the boss in the house. <laughs> yes, we have Sandy Williamson, IFBB professional judge, NPC judge. She's the boss because she's been on the ground since day one. She's judged me at all my Olympias. That's what I wanted to all say. All your shows. She's judged us both. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Sandy. Which just tells me how old I really am. No, <laughs> no wow. No, I'm, seriously, I'm really happy, to, obviously, to be here and stuff. We've been talking about it for a while, so mm -hmm. it's, yeah. you know, glad to make it happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we got a great. bunch of information to squeeze out of you. <laughs> but, you know, like, you always so, you're amazing. We just went to that, uh, Women's, uh, the first NPC uh, women's seminar that uh, we had, mm -hmm. and that was just amazing. Just to see you with your passion in your element and making things happen for women, that was just very inspiring for me. Mm -hmm. I saw you with tears in your eyes so many times, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, I just want to be behind and support. You, you have such an amount of knowledge in the sport and experience, and you've been involved for so long. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows so much but they, I don't feel like you share enough about yourself. About yourself. So yes. I, we want to know everything from the start. When did you compete? Oh How did you get in it? When did you lay your eyes on the first muscular body? All of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I mean, obviously, I th you know, we talked about this. So I'm, I grew up really heavy. I did. You know, I grew up with a bunch of sisters and stuff, all athletes and stuff, but I was the bookworm, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was. I was over 250 pounds. Wow. And then, really? yeah, yeah. All through, mm -hmm. you know, grade school, high school. And then when I, at the end, like going into college, you know, nursing school, I started to actually look at, you know, try to diet and, mm -hmm. you know. But you have to remember, in the, Late, I mean, the mid seventies. It was the models, five foot eleven, six foot, oh God, and yes. one hundred and fifteen pounds. Yeah, that was never going to be. You know what I mean? It wasn't attainable to me. But we grew up with like, you know, if you could eat one meal a day only, you were doing good because now you yeah. had a lot. You know what I mean and stuff. So it was just yeah. again, just poor nutrition. You know, lack of education mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah, but when I graduated from nursing school three years later, I was seventy two pounds at my height. Wow. I was anorexic, obviously, before. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From 200, mm -hmm. over 200 mm -hmm. to 72? Yeah. But it was wow. before it was in the, like, it wasn't yes. out yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh. And they actually thought I had leukemia because I was losing so much weight. Okay. And me, I was mm -hmm. like, I don't have to eat. Mm -hmm. I thought, I, you know what I mean? I yeah. felt empowered. I did. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, I could go all day. I didn't need to eat. You know what I mean? You're just all gel. You know, that's, it's a, mm -hmm. you know, for anorexics, it's, it's a mind, you know, it's an mm -hmm. obviously yeah. you can't do that. Like, I'd love to do that now. It yeah, ain't happening. Yeah. No, right. But you know right. what I mean? It's, it's, it's an emotional, mm -hmm. you know, it's an emotional thing. Yeah. So um, my ex-husband in 1980 took me to see, he wanted me to see a bodybuilding show. Um, How was he involved with bodybuilding? He, you know, when he was a football pl football player, he was a uh, weightlifter and stuff. And um, I was going. To, I started to go to an all women's gym because back at least in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I in remember. The, that's right. I told you. That Linda she told believe. me, and I couldn't believe it yeah. that the gyms were oh, separated. Oh yeah, there was no genders. co -ed, At least no. not from you know the town that I was in right. and stuff. So I was going to an all, and I like I said, I'd come home and I'd be like, oh, I just did a hundred reps with ten pounds on the leg press, and my ex husband would be like. Who the heck would, I don't, you're like he'd say, like, I don't see the purpose of that, you know what I mean? But I was like, well, if I only, because he'd say, you need to do weights and like do 20 times. And I'd be like, I'm going to get these big, heavy muscles. Uh -huh. And okay. why, you know what I mean? Because, yep. yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to remember when I was coming up, weightlifting women's sports didn't involve weightlifting and stuff. No. It didn't. Yes. That no. came on more in the 90s, I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So he wanted me to go. We went to Philadelphia again, not knowing at the time that I was actually going to go see the first Miss Olympia mm -hmm. by George Snyder. Mm -hmm. You saw the first Miss the Olympia? First. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went to. Oh, awesome. Oh, it, well, I mean, now, like I said, not like having an idea where I was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And stuff and now being able to look back on it yeah because it was a dinner it was actually in Philadelphia which is you know like an hour from my whole family mm -hmm. and it was a dinner theater and stuff and I you know I saw Rachel and and all the girls and then they would walk you know afterwards they got dressed they came around they talked to people and when Rachel walked by and you know, I like a size one jean uh -huh. I was at the Y on Monday morning <laughs> but 
yes, could not work out in the it. weight room at the Y because I could be a member of the mm-hmm. Y, but women weren't allowed in the weight room. That's right. Oh my mm-hmm. God. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> times have times 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 changed. changed a lot. Yes. Yeah, the sport yeah. really evolved. And then I just, you know, I, you know, my ex husband was like, oh, you should keep compete and stuff. So competed for, but I, you know, with the anorexic still in my mind, I couldn't like take, I wouldn't put the weight on. You know what I mean? That okay. I needed to grow. Mm-hmm. And so then, you feel you felt like you couldn't put down all the protein and yeah, eat all that much yeah, to gain well, the size. And, and I was a nurse. I didn't learn nutrition in, you know, in nursing. Yeah. You don't. I, you know, I learned, started to learn really good nutrition when I started, you know, to compete and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Linda, you probably remember Candy Census. Oh, yeah. yes, I definitely Well, Candy actually was only like, like 20 minutes, 40 minutes away. So I got to be. So that's good. You had someone. Yeah, that, I like, got to. Mind yes, I got to, to be help. friends with her. Okay. And so after about a year or two, I was competing. She said to me, you know, why do you want to judge? And I, I you know, what I would like to judge. And I'm like. I'm a full-time nurse. I mean, I was trying to get, you know, going to get mm-hmm. pregnant and stuff. I was just married. I'm like, I have no time to do that. She goes, just, mm-hmm. you know, my ex-husband, I bet you if you start judging a little bit, you have a better idea of what judges are looking mm-hmm. for. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. So mm-hmm. I did that, and I actually, I really did. I fell in love with the judging. You love but that. But I also found out that when I competed, I was starting to place higher than I, I thought I should have, and my ex-husband was a very realistic. Oh, really? And I'd say, I'd say to him, I shouldn't have been that high at that show. And he goes, you're going to have to make a decision. You're now oh. judging. Well, I'm competing yeah. with the guys that I judged with. I see. Now they know me as a person. You know what I mean? And yes, stuff. I How do. many years did you compete? Just four and a half. Four and yeah. a half. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I. So well, there, there, there's got to be like at least ten competitions in oh, there. Oh, I right? did eighteen. Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. But you know, years. like it brings me such satisfaction to say that Sandy Williamson is a female bodybuilding <laughs> know, competitor. Right? Well, and, but people will ask. Was. People will ask me. They'll say like, <laughs> "Oh, well, what did you compete in?" 1982, there was only one thing I, I was, was a competing. female bodybuilder. <laughs> Women's yeah. bodybuilding. Yeah. And how were the numbers back then? How many competitors did uh, you f- I, well, compete Well, I actually with? did mm-hmm. my very first show, and we were talking about that last mm-hmm. I did my very first show in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on in Soldiers and Sailors. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was eighth out of 18, and I thought Lynn Perry actually won that show. Okay. Yeah. 18 and, and, and Candace, yeah. Candy was third. That's where I met her, actually. I met her at the Pittsburgh show, yeah. her and her husband. Yeah. No, we and were all a, a close we were, big yeah. group. Oh, it was because yeah. it was only one class. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, to, you know. But yeah. yeah. So you what was your the, first Miss Olympia? You were only like for me, my first Olympia, twenty nine competitors. So you know, wow. now we're looking at what? How many? There's a there lot. There are a total of two hundred and fifty. Oh, absolutely. Competitors at yeah. the show. That's just yeah. like how it's evolved. Yeah. So. No, ab- it, it has Absol- it absolutely. It really has in a great way. But it was in the in the beginning, like I said. For women to put muscle on, yeah. mm-hmm. it was not something that society yeah. like yeah. accepted right away. Yeah. So I had a work. challenge with that as well when I, oh, yeah. you know, as a cheerleader, oh. and then I learned of this because it's the same thing. We were not allowed in the weight room, and then after that, I I'm at the gym. I see my first bodybuilder, and I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. You guys just hang out in the gym, and you don't go outdoors, and you don't run, or you're not, you know, you're not trying to lose weight. You're trying to gain. Way. And so for me, that was that was really challenging to get my mind around that. Wrap yeah. my mind. Around well, it that. is because I think for for most women, again, obviously everything's general, but for most women, you spend your life trying to get smaller, tighter, more curvy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And with guys, I learned even as a judge, I learned real quick. Don't ever tell a guy that you a, a bodybuilder. That when you get off stage, my God, you don't look as big here that yes. you did on stage. Right. Women, oh, no. they want to hear that. Yes. I really, but really not we female do. bodybuilders. Yes. The but, other division. Yeah, well, the other, yes. <laughs> but, but, not, but the men, definitely. Yes, yeah. it was like. Sandy, so now you have the eye of a judge. If you are like, I haven't, 18 shows, I haven't seen a picture of you on stage, right? I would love to. But if you were to judge yourself back then with the eyes you have now. Oh. Tell us, describe, how was the the image of the athlete? I was was thin. I was small, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean, and stuff. Um, What was your best part? Actually, everybody told me it was my biceps. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Steve, well, you know Which Steve Which is Win- a really big thing for well, women yeah. to have a strong upper body Well, back you know then. Steve Winnistrom. Yes. Okay? I went and did a show in New Jersey. Uh, John Kemper 
mm -hmm. one of John Kemper's yes. shows. And we check-in was late in the day, but it was a it turned out to be a much bigger show mm -hmm. than anybody mm -hmm. expected. And I was in line, you know, waiting to check in. And Steve Winnistrom again, I didn't know who he was at the time, but he came up to me and he goes, "You have really good arms on you." Oh, Steve so and I, I know what Steve I can and I get talk a about her if huh? I'm interested. I know what I can get a picture of you. <laughs> Steve promised me he will never put up a picture. Steve Winterstrom from Barry Brooks. <laughs> but yes, I mean, and Steve and I, you know, then became mm -hmm. friends, you know, friends over the year because he was such a big, you know, big supporter of, of all of our women's sports. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. He he knew more about, you know, if I forgot, like, who mm -hmm. placed somewhere or who, oh, yeah. you know, won, he's a great historian. I would just call him and he, you know, he'd have that information. Mm. Yeah. And what was the, what do you feel was the best show or your best shape? the best placing probably those years. actually and I went back it's funny I went back a couple years ago to do the Lehigh Valley it's in north it's by Allentown in Pennsylvania and I got third in that show Candy okay. won it I forget who was mm -hmm. second I was third and that qualified me for the time to go to an you know would have okay. went to a national show and back then they gave out like best posers and stuff so That's I got right. I got best poser so I was like all oh, you know, oh, I was that was great. proud so of still myself have that show huh? is still is, are they still having that oh, show? Oh, yeah. They are. Yeah, okay. so because they were actually doing the Lehigh Valley as an AAU before the mm -hmm. NPC came mm -hmm. in. So they celebrated three, four years ago now, I think four or five years ago, their 75th. Mm -hmm. So when they found out that I had competed there, you know, one time they asked mm -hmm. me if I'd come and head judge it. Mm -hmm. So then I, I went back and, had, you know, head judged it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It, yep. It's been mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Oh, ap yeah. When you look back, just like where all the years mm -hmm. went. And I'm sure it's not at the same venue. No. Now things have gotten, we're so big now. I couldn't believe, I go back to the uh, first venue at Redford Theater in Michigan, and I could not believe, like, <laughs> like where the posing area, like where we had to all get dressed. Well, and, and like, I'm sure too, when you started competing, it was powerlifting and lifting That's first, right. and then bodybuilding was like at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I used to do, because I, I help out, I do scores, you mm -hmm. know, like lifts and stuff to, to, for the powerlifters, and then they would do bodybuilding was like the end of the day um, and again Steve promised me he wouldn't but he Steve has a picture of me like on a picnic table doing a pose because we we weren't in fancy mm -hmm. venues you know we weren't in no. fancy venues like no. we are now no mm -hmm. and we talked about there was no tanning like did we do the tanning no like you, did, you would get on stage with no tanning. no yeah. we know it was oh no you tan. worked but you had to go outside and work or you had a uh, tanning beds had mm -hmm. come into being oh, God, that was yes. it there was no self tanning product to put no. on or anything mm -hmm. there was not i mean when i first started there wasn't like protein powder it was none of that mm -hmm. stuff and like i remember when the first pre digested protein came in in our gym mm -hmm. it was the most god awful dark thick stuff <laughs> that and the guys would put the raw eggs in it and then drink it down oh, yeah. i'm like oh my lord but again it's it's now a science yes. it really has yes. of course you know, with all the yeah. stuff you know yes but you know, this is yeah. all fascinating, and I actually really want to find out a bit more about it after this short commercial break. Coming back from this commercial break here in the studio of FemFlex Friday with Sandy Williamson. Sandy has shared so much information and so many amazing things from the past. Fascinating. And I want to know more about this. 
<laughs> yes. I want to know more about the mixed pairs oh, contest yeah. that you have done. Oh my God, yeah. Mm -hmm. for, I don't even remember when mixed pairs, it was probably into the early 90s. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we mixed pairs was part, you know, like mm -hmm. you'd have men's bodybuilding, yeah. women's yes. bodybuilding, and mixed pairs. Mm -hmm. Would you couple and, with somebody there yeah. at the show or you would go coordinate that before? It depends. You have to coordinate before, yeah. right? Yeah, for we, like, in, like I said, my gym, we had two other girls, so there was like, th we did three, you know, okay. when we went to mm -hmm. the state show, we would do, you know, all of us would compete and stuff. But when we used to do the world championships, yes, and stuff, oh, yeah. we would actually sometimes we would pair people there. You know what I mean? Okay. And stuff. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And then also too, the the world championships, they actually used to do like an opposing routine team. for the whole team. Yes. For the team. Yeah. So you'd yeah. get there, you'd have the these too. six or seven men <laughs> and you'd practice the same thing with the women. And these women had never seen each other before, but you'd have to put together a whole mm -hmm. team posing mm -hmm. and we would actually judge it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Would you like this to come back? Perhaps? I, uh, you know what what was, do you think well, about the reality here, of that? Yeah. I was just sitting here thinking about this because you know the reality of the business and how much we've grown. So, because we know like all the little details and how we worked with that. You had so much time to do a whole lot of things, but now we have to be smart and it's about time and the shows are so much longer. So when someone comes oh, up yeah. and they say, let's do mixed pairs again, you go, no, we can't really. As a promoter, you don't have yeah, the exactly. physical time. It's like, I know. Where are we going to put it? Where are we going to yeah. do yeah. it, right? No, absolutely. Every time you like, you think you're going to add something to a show, yeah. that's the first thing that, yeah. as a promoter and a business person, yeah, though, because it is a business. You know, yeah, I mean, obviously, it is a, it is a business. Yeah. business. And, you know, and especially now, you know, mm -hmm. post-COVID, mm -hmm. everything, the expense of everything, mm -hmm. you know, has, has gone yeah. back up. That, you know, that was one of the things really hard for me as a, a promoter and being at an event and now really understanding how crucial yes. time is and time management. And I know from the point of view of, of the competitor, they may think, or the audience, a family member, think you rushed her off stage. She she should have, you know, been able to come out and spend like a minute. I wanted to say, no, you have to know, like if you do the math of the number of competitors mm -hmm. times a minute, yeah. you know, I mean, this show would be going on for like, yeah. Well, and we were ever. talking earlier too, again, and that's one of the reasons that I think for me, the NPC has grown the way it's grown is because, you know, Jim was always willing to listen, you know, to see what society wanted. Because each generation has different priorities. Mm -hmm. Totally, yes. And I we agree. were talking, our athletes, like they don't want to be there for 12 hours. They yeah. they do. They want to go in. They want to show, but they also want to have time mm -hmm. at the end of the day mm -hmm. to actually share with their family and friends, mm -hmm. yep. you know, and celebrate what they've accomplished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when the shows go to like 12 or 1 o'clock, they don't have, mm -hmm. they don't, you know, yeah. they don't have that available. Yeah, you guys have just, I mean, every single year improved upon this and that's why I think it feels like it's amazing because it's been over 20 years. Like my we were talking about the, the mid 80s and mm -hmm. how it was just women's bodybuilding. And I got to see with the addition of each division. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say, okay, now what? I remember when they first were talking about women's physique, and I was like, okay. But then it was from a place of sometimes intimidation. Okay, you're trying to you're trying to get rid of women bodybuilders. We're the first, we're the foundation. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But um it's but just I amazing. Think, you you know, guys have Jake done and, a great job. Jake and I actually talked about this one time in an interview. Because it's like every sport has their extreme, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yep. And I always did, I had just seen the movie mm -hmm. Everest. And, you know, there's how many, you know, uh, people try to climb Everest every year knowing that a certain percent is not going to make it. Yep. And I always think women's bodybuilding is our extreme, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Everybody, again, it's not for everybody, but it gives athletes a chance that want to see what can I what can mm -hmm. I do with my body? Yeah. Where can I take it to? How much muscle? Mm -hmm. You know, because obviously your genetics, your structure all play mm -hmm. a part. And there know? are always like those girls with the big genetics, like wide frame like I yeah. have. I would never fit in any other no. class. No, mm -hmm. and me, I'm never going to be you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Part I of it was my own uh, emotional thing, which sure. would have held me back. But you know what I mean? I was never going to gain that. You know, now if I wouldn't have known, like, you know, 20 years later, you can lift all you want, Sandy. You're not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, when, yeah. you know, when someone, somebody says to me something about oh, women, you know, if I start lifting, I'm going to gain. I'm like, Mm -hmm. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. Not that it, it is. It is hard. So it, you know what I mean. Easy. But 
and I, it, but it, it, I can't. It's hard for me to get across to women about how much healthier. How much? Yeah. Oh my oh, God. How much healthier? Absolutely. Being six foot and one hundred and fifteen mm-hmm. pounds, or being one of us. We are the one. I mean, seriously, you're going to be healthy longer. Your bone, your strength. It, it, I am telling you, there's nothing better yeah, for women yeah, than yeah, weight training. Absolutely. That's why I hear that you do your cardio and your workouts every morning, no oh. matter where you go, even oh. if you're judging, right? Mm-hmm. You probably judge a show every weekend, don't just, you? Just by now? about. I'm like, I already got like mm-hmm. almost 40 weekends oh, God. already promised. And you wake up week. at 4 o'clock and you do your cardio. Yep. So you can go up there and be fresh and ready for the outfits. And be a happier person. And be yeah. a happier person. That's right. <laughs> the only way to oh, yeah. yeah. I always tell athletes, you want, you want me to judge you after I've done cardio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but again, but, mm-hmm. you know, I'm fortunate enough because you know, my husband so. owned a gym, so we have a gym on our property. Mm-hmm. And so you know, through COVID and everything, oh, I was still... Great. Because, you know, mm-hmm. I'm never going to give up, never going to mm-hmm. give up the lifting. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's I know, amazing. Best thing ever. So at four, four years and a half into your career, on stage mm-hmm. career, then you decided that you want to be a judge because your ex-husband said you need to choose around. Yep. yep. Right? And so I, I, you know, I went, started to judge, started to judge with mm-hmm. Candy. And then you have to remember, though, too, NPC started in 82, but the NPC was all men. Okay. The, mm-hmm. the women's wow. organization was AFWB, American oh. Federation of Women's Bodybuilding. It was a separate federation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I started, obviously, in that, and Candy did too. And then in 84, the two combined. Okay. And Candy so was So in at- the beginning, you judged just women. Yes. Okay. And then, um, and then uh, in 84, when they combined, mm-hmm. um, Candy was the first women's chairperson. And then... You know, Candy uh, unfortunately got cancer, mm-hmm. and she passed away at a really mm-hmm. early age. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, May Malika took over for about a year or so. Okay. But then they, her and her partner at the time, uh, moved to uh, one of the Caribbean islands for a magazine for mm-hmm. I think for some kind of publication. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Jim called me because at that time you could fly on somebody else's ticket. Mm-hmm. Oh and yeah, well, there was an athlete at the time, Kathy Palio. Women's World yeah, Championships yeah. was in. Um, uh, Singapore Mm -hmm. and so he said to me would I want to go to Singapore Mm -hmm. and first I couldn't imagine the why would anybody pay for a flight for me to go you know because that Mm -hmm. I mean it was 1986 yeah you know um so I flew to Kathy and I went to Singapore when I came back Jim said you know called me and said would you want to take over the women's thing and I said "Mm, I don't have the time again I'm a full-time nurse and it was five days a week back then you know Yes, yeah, I was always amazed at how you were able to still maintain your full-time job as a nurse and travel and be at all yeah. of these Well, shows. it helps once I moved to California because that's really when we were 12 hours, three days a week. So I that see. made a big difference. But yeah, in, you know, in 86, I was five days a week, you know, weekends, mm-hmm. holidays, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I told him I'd help him for a couple mm-hmm. months till he And found. then when did you start judging men too? Right when I right when right I started then. to judge, and how hard was it for you to to judge yeah. men you know compared what? to women? You know what? I it's funny. I, maybe part of it was because of my ex husband. Like he really got me involved, like in the sport. Like I read every magazine. Like I knew okay. like all the old time bodybuilders, and mm-hmm. I looked at and I it, I started to judge with the you know with with the NPC and with the men and stuff. And, and back then everything was, you know, you did accuracies and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just apparently had a good, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I also had the best mentor in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, absolutely. I, I right. judged with Jim for yeah. years. And then, you know, um, because I'm actually involved more in the judging even than Steve White because Steve's wife competed, you know, Bev competed. Yeah, right. So he didn't really start judging to us till That's once. That's right. Yeah, until she competed. You know, she retired. Retired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, between, you know what I mean? I had all those years with Jim and Steve and you weren't going to get better men- mm-hmm. mentors than them. You've wow. seen such a big so, part of history, of the history of this sport. Yeah, and that's why, I mean, I look at the young folk today, the current athletes and just the importance of knowing this well, history. Knowing who, well, and knowing who and came. Knowing. Look at all the women, like mm-hmm. with yourself and Corey and mm-hmm. Rachel and Ke- I mean, there's so many that really paved the way for yes. where we are now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I just think, yeah. I think people should know that no matter what we're talking about, you, should, right. know you should know your where history. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, where that area of your life came from like who's you know like who paved the way who made it better for you yeah. so this is Absolutely. great because you started as a bodybuilder yourself and then you saw the whole uh the whole industry the whole sport developing so when did we start having fitness and why 
1995. Okay. Uh, because, and what was the reason? Yeah. Yes, it started with just fitness because uh, there was other organizations that were doing these fitness competitions. Okay. And seeing that's that's one of the things that I love about the NPC because you know Jim saw like at that time it, as many women didn't really didn't really want to get you know that big and stuff, but they all these other places you see in these fitness organizations. So it was like okay, that seems like that's what this generation of women want. Mm -hmm. So in 1995, we did the first fitness uh, competition at, in Chicago, mm -hmm. Illinois. How different mm -hmm. was it uh, than what we see today? Oh my God. Well, we only had only had one class, and um, mm -hmm. I had also, um, because we were going to do it, Jim said, you had ex actually Ted and myself, my husband, judge some of the loose wicks just to see what they were looking for, you know, what elements mm -hmm. to look for, that kind of thing. So when we did the first one, it was something like 150 women showed up. Mm -hmm. Nobody had any idea <laughs> that meant. And what? No, exactly. And you, can't wa well, you can't watch 150 routine, you know what I mean? And don't right. forget, we did, wow. well, we did three rounds for a while. We had wow. a, a yes. one That's right. The one, piece. one piece. We had, well, we had that, but we first we start with the one piece and the bikini and then the routine right. and then we added later on we did the thing with the all, all in one the, yeah the all black, all black yes yeah yes the cat the i was oh, called we had the how many years did we have that oh a couple now we need jm here yeah, he I would <laughs> yeah, i want to say <laughs> late Definitely. 90s probably mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah it was only a couple years and mm -hmm. so but yeah so what we did is we did the first couple elimination rounds on bodies we'd like eliminate 30 redo it eliminate 30 and then we got down to the top 30 so then they all did their routines I see and we so mean okay. if there were yeah. 150 athletes so the elimination was based on like but the physique. With routine okay. yeah I mean I'm, okay. I'm sorry on the, physique yes okay. and then on we physique. did the yeah and Adela though was Adela well, I want to say for because that's right. what her right, name right, was. right right but I Adela know. yeah Garcia was in that group and she had one of the best bodies up there and and hopefully mm -hmm. she won't get get upset for me for saying this but she well we talk about it. Uh, she couldn't do a routine to save her butt. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> and but it took like five or six years. Mm -hmm. She kept coming yeah. back, mm -hmm. and then look at she and became Miss right. Olympia. I yeah. mean, yeah, that's pretty amazing. So, what did the one piece do? You could see the, mm -hmm. sh the yeah, flowing the shape of the and line, stuff, and also because they did a routine with it. They that's did right. Oh, they did a routine. Yeah, they, yeah, we Form exactly. They, yeah, because. Again, lots of girls were spending so much money on different types of costumes. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like if we made you wear something that was all the same, yeah. then we could focus mm -hmm. just on your routine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So it was, but it was then in this situation, it was more of the skill aspect that was judged as opposed to the perform the performer at, uh, aspect that judge um, nowadays, right? No, it was still still. I mean, st I mean, obviously the skills have changed over the years, but it was it was more that we thought if we made it uniform with the the, the costume, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't that wouldn't overpower yeah. like you yeah. know like the creativity of yeah. just the costume wouldn't overpower what the routine itself was, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I know that later in the game you also eliminated the one piece yep. because it was so expensive it, with yeah, all it, the again, stones, it got, yeah, right? Yeah, it got, when you had all the other division, you know, the yeah. divisions starting up and they could just compete with one suit and stuff. To be a fitness competitor, it cost, it, you know, it, it added a lot, lot more was cost to the, yeah, yeah. to the competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what was the next uh, division figure. that came? Figure. Figure, because the, the women that were competing in fitness had really, obviously, really nice physiques. And right. so we had a lot of other women that was like, I can but be, I can, yeah, I can, I, I'm built like that, but, but I can't I, do a flip. No, I can't, I can't do no, a handstand mm -hmm. to save was my Monica life. Was Monica Brandt in that? Was she fitness? Monica first? started fitness and first, fitness. and then switched yeah. to, and she then switched, switched to figure. That's yes, right. yeah, yeah. So then we started figure, and that I, I don't remember what year it had to be. Early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. yeah. It had to be early 2000s. Yeah, and we started figure. Oh, yeah, it was pretty, I think my it first was year fresh. as a promoter, I, I believe it was like 2002, and then I remembered like ordering the trophies, and I would order them from Neil Anderson, and they always had a picture of, you know, an example of yep. a female yep. a figure. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so that's what figure looks like yeah. know, from the trophy. I forget that you actually promoted that yeah. long, Linda. Yeah, that long. <laughs> I know, it was just... I, same here, but I remember the introduction of, it seems like, because I've always had figure at my shows and never had the fitness division, yep. Yep. I get a little blurry on, so at what time, but it was early yeah, yeah. I thought it was early two, two, two thousand. thousand. Yeah. yeah, for sure yeah. it was because I my, did my first show in 2000 and there were only two divisions in Europe. Really? I was still in Europe, mm -hmm. yeah. 
But we were with IFBB, you know, the, all, all all over the world, NPC mm -hmm. in the States and IFBB in all I'm over the world. I'm assuming the first yeah. time I saw you was probably at a Miss Olympia. I just remember it was like, oh my God, where did you mm -hmm. come from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, because you have such beautiful symmetry and yes. full muscle and belt. Nice, I, and yeah. Oh my everything God. Everything just looked healthy. Yes. That was healthy. much later. I, I, I managed to make it to the United States in 2010. So it took me a few years to turn pro in Europe and get over here. But if you could choose between bodybuilding and fitness, if fitness class was it, would you have done fitness instead of bodybuilding? Oh, heck no. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. oh, I have no rhythm at all. I have no rhythm. The, the, to me, That's I mean, the fitness of... is one of, obviously, I to me, is the hardest division because not it's only hard. do you have, especially as a pro, you have mm -hmm. to have an amazing physique mm -hmm. and you have to be able to do routine, but it's not even that. Mm -hmm. When you get to that Olympia level, That's right. just doing the moves yeah. aren't going to get you to we win. Had, now you have yeah. to have rhythm too. Like yeah. you have to be you have to have so many pieces. You so yes. many pieces. Yeah, we we had Ariel Kadar on oh. here and yeah. just the conversation and the depth of all the things that they have to think about, you know, and do and well, and look what she just did at the Arnolds. Mm -hmm. And again, it's it's it, again, it's not just the routine itself. It's trying to find that one routine and music that just fits your personality mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, she just nailed that for her. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. It just fit her. She nailed it. Yeah, for her personality mm -hmm. and stuff. And I, I don't know how those women do. Uh, seriously, mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. up with that type of you know mm -hmm. routine music, yeah. the whole thing, and then like I said, to make it look effortlessly okay. on stage it, mm -hmm. it with you know because again they're all also you know they're also limiting their nutrition and stuff oh, too, yeah. to, to look right you know, to look that yes way. and so yeah. that's why i said it's, it's such a but no i would have never done fitness no <laughs> yeah no no <laughs> i have a question before we go on and as far as how the sport has evolved and talking about women's bodybuilding because probably one of the first changes is when they split and had the divisions where they had where they had lightweight heavyweight and, and oh, lightweight yeah. mm -hmm. and I always get this from a couple people that want to say like when they came along with women's physique and then they're saying well you know with women's bodybuilding we need uh, two weight classes we need a heavyweight class and a lightweight class because the light the lightweight competitors feel like pressure to be as big as Iris Kyle or Linda Murray or Alina Popa and and then that there's not a real difference between women's physique. I see the difference between women's physique. So I want you to tell me or to explain that um, a lightweight uh, bodybuilder it, is definitely different oh, from absolutely. women's physique. Please, you know what? Please, yeah, put this I to talk rest. about this all the time in my seminars. And again, sometimes it, it it's hard to explain because if you you're a judge. Mm -hmm. you can see the difference right away. Mm -hmm. It's the density of the muscle on the bone structure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. That women's physique, whether she's a small person, mm -hmm. you know, a small stature, or, or like, go back to the bodybuilding thing, but that small bodybuilder, mm -hmm. her density though is that's still right. gonna be much more depth yeah. on her physique than you're gonna see on a women's physique. Absolutely. You know? And it, it just is, and it. But it, again, it, it takes a while as a judge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To, mm -hmm. We see that right away yeah, when you yeah. walk out. But to explain it to somebody, you know, once I start, mm -hmm. I bring photos up, and I'll say, "Look at the debt," and they're like, "Oh yeah, okay, now mm -hmm. I see it." You can really. But see they it. think if you're like you said, if you're if you're a lightweight women's bodybuilder, yeah. oh, you could compete in women's physique, and right. it's like no, because no, we're looking the at the depth and the development on your bone structure. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's why when you get to the pros, you can have somebody that's a smaller stature beat somebody that's a much taller. You know, because yeah. we're looking at that whole symmetry and your own depth on your own bone structure. Mm -hmm. So would you mm -hmm. see a reason to split the women's division into lightweight and heavyweight? I, from my perspective, the numbers are not up there yet. Mm -hmm. You know, to split, the, like sometimes we barely have six to 10 women in yeah. the female bodybuilding yeah. mm -hmm. division on stage if you split them in that in two. You know what, and that's, I mean, again, that's something, you know, like maybe we as an organization need to look at because it was when women's bodybuilding was a lot more popular oh, because yeah. like mm -hmm. I said, I, I you know, you, society yeah. changes, what people's priorities change. Because that's why when you get to the pros, you don't have those divisions. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's from a judging standpoint, right. it's as easy for me to judge somebody that's five foot two yeah. against somebody that's five foot mm -hmm. ten. You know what I mean? Because I again, you're judging the development on that individual structure. Mm -hmm. But 
again, years ago, it was like you had yeah. tw- you know, 15 girls in one class. So if you would have had one class, you might have had 35, 40 And girls. I did have seen, uh, yeah. I did have seen girls that uh, won, even if they were smaller, with that density, like smaller bodybuilders winning over bigger bodybuilders oh, in the same division because of uh, like it, yeah, checking yeah, all those boxes. Yeah, because you're looking at that yeah. development on, yeah. on, your, on the individual structure. Okay. So yeah. this is what I always answer the girls, the girls that want to come from physique to bodybuilding and say that we should have two classes. I said, the numbers are not there no. yet. It is no. not granted. No, so no. It, it, yeah, it yeah. generates by the interest that, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's out there. Yeah. yeah. And I want to talk a little bit more about the, I know, the, but the, I can, the next I division. We have to go to break. <laughs> to but break. we're going to have a commercial break. <laughs> People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Coming back from this commercial break here in the studio of FemFlex Friday with Sandy Williamson. What are the judges looking for this year? And they always say this year, as if this year is a trend. I know. <laughs> right? So what are the judges looking for this year? <laughs> I'll give you the same answer yes. that I tell every athlete. I always say, to me, like the... the the ideals in our sport because there's never there's never an athlete up there that's the perfect ideal i don't care Mm -hmm. you know what you know there's not there's all everybody can always improve but i always say when you look at the arnold's and you look at the olympia those top five in all the divisions that's kind of what your ideal should be yes you know Mm -hmm. what i mean um you know now in bikini like obviously in in bodybuilding and men's Mm -hmm. physique and classic physique i mean obviously in figure structure comes up you know, is a big part oh, yeah. of that. You know what I mean? You do have to have a taper. You do, you know what I mean? And stuff. But when you get to bikini, if you look at the top eight in bikini, they all have a little bit different structure. And I think if you're an athlete, mm-hmm. that should like go, that should make you feel good. Because we're not looking for just a certain structure of bikini. Yes. We really are looking at what looks good on just you and what yeah. looks good on just, just you. you. And yeah. it's going to be different, mm-hmm. but you can still be to get right next to yeah. each other mm-hmm. in that first call out. Yeah. And it is. And that question is if they can make some kind of change to kind of adjust to what you're saying. Like if you say, well, okay, we want rip, you know, glutes or striations in your quads. Like, like what? You, can you go and like yeah, make well, that happen? Exactly. But if you look at, like I said, especially like in bikini, it's like you do have some of the girls have a little bit more muscle. Some have are a little bit leaner. But it fits them. It fits their structure. Mm-hmm. It fits yeah. their look. Mm-hmm. And I will be honest with you. I I, sw- I I swear on this. Like you know, at, at, at any of our shows, all the judges pass down to whoever the head judges who they think is that top group. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now because the quality has gotten so good, we used to say like give me your top five or give me your top four. And now we're telling judges, give me your top eight. Because as a head judge, you don't want to miss anybody. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, the, and like I said, the quality is so good. All the, the judges pass that down. The head judge, that's who we, you know, we call out and yeah. stuff. And like I said, it can be all a little bit different mm-hmm. thing. But I will tell you, and I, I've showed this to athletes and to to other people and stuff. Like, we just make Roman numerals. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so you can circle the athletes that have the majority of those judges, and I will show mm-hmm. you, there's a couple athletes, like you might have one athlete that has maybe, you know, two judges thought maybe, but I will tell you the consistency in the la- really mm-hmm. in the last mm-hmm. three to four years, and this one I'm gonna attribute mm-hmm. to Tyler Mannion, mm-hmm. uh, has the consistency of the judging mm-hmm. has yeah. gotten so much better. Mm-hmm. You know, trainers mm-hmm. have said that to I me. Understand. Even athletes that are trainers, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Some of our pros, they said to me, all through COVID, they were like, Sandy, the, the judging has gotten so, because mm-hmm. that was, that's Tyler's, I mean, Jim, I always say Jim grew the sport mm-hmm. and Tyler came in focusing, because mm-hmm. he grew up more as a judge, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and he's an athlete. Mm-hmm. You know, whether but he's I also rest- feel that with the addition of so many divisions, actually there is a there is a refinement in the judges because you have such a diversity of yes. bodies, and then you can actually judge more because you have more to judge, yes. right? No, you're at, no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. The divisions have made it yes. actually easier. Yes, yes, yes. totally. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because you have more athletes now that fit in that criteria, in the right spot. Yes, yeah, right I place. think the biggest thing that sometimes that 
athletes, trainers, the audience will, will say, like, they'll come up to me and they'll say, you know, so-and-so, they have the best body on stage. And I'll look at them and go, yep, totally agree with you. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> they were fourth or fifth. They were outside the parameters uh-huh, of this yes. division. You know, when it was yes. Body, yes, when it was bodybuilding, it was like the best female or male, mm-hmm. best symmetry, the most mm-hmm. muscle, the better condition, mm-hmm. winner. Yes. But you can have all that, but if it's too big, too hard for that division, you're so not this winning. is what we're noticing because obviously the more you train, the human body has a tendency to grow muscles, to improve right. quality, density. Yep. There's no doubt about it, right? The more you train, the better you get from a certain yep. perspective, right? So how do you keep the divisions in their parameters, right? And it's hard, you know what I mean? It is hard because the thing, but we, you know, we try, and that's why it's mm-hmm. so nice with that because I always say to athletes, you need to move up. Yes. Oh, but I don't want, <clears throat> we're not changing the division for you to that's stay right. here. Yes, that's you know, right. Because I've had athletes, you know, I've So you score couple, them down when that happens? Yes. Well, I've had mm-hmm. a couple, you know, Amanda Latone is one of the best because I, when I first saw her, she just, she just had such a stage presence. She mm-hmm. really was a wow factor. But I said to her, I said, I think you could actually move on then to figure because she mm-hmm. and she looked at me. And she goes, "Can't I'm a model?" Well, she said, "I'm a model. That would I would lose my you know what I my career." Okay. And yeah. so I always say to athletes, "You've got to do what's the best for you." That's right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and we get this a lot now too with like with the well the develop you know the institution of wellness and stuff. It's like you know so and so said I should be I should do wellness. And I the first thing I always say to an oh, athlete, my. you're going to compete. Five, six, maybe seven times a year if you're lucky, you know what I mean? What do you want to look like the other 300 days a year? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You want your body, you want to shape your body, yeah. how you're going to feel comfortable mm-hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. That yeah. that is a beautiful yeah. point of view, yes. It is. You know, you you I mean, this whole sport is about being making yourself better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I always say to them, you have to, you know, because they'll say, you know, or so I'll say to somebody, you know, somebody will say about wellness and I'll say, well, you know, about how you want to look and they'll say, oh, I can't, I you know I haven't been able to train legs for like two years and I really like to train. Well, then you answered your question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you want to move up mm-hmm. because you say you feel like you're holding yourself back mm-hmm. because, you know what I mean? Because, you know, your, your lower body's a little bit too yeah. developed. And they're like, yeah, I said, then you just answered your own question. Mm-hmm. You move up. Mm-hmm. But if you're somebody that goes, no, I don't. I, I, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to put in a little bit more muscle. I don't want to put. Then you need to right. stay where you are. Right. Right. So, so do you do with with the athletes immediately after the show? Do you ha- suggest that they come up to you after? Should they always go up to the judge? You know, if they place. You know what? Should it, they it, ask for that feedback. It. I. I for me. I. Mm-hmm. For me, I'd rather talk to athletes at the show. A. As you can see. I enjoy, yes, but I enjoy but I also it. enjoy meeting mm-hmm. the you know especially because yeah. it's mostly women that come up to me. Um, but I also enjoy meeting the athletes. I love to know like oh my god you're a mother of five. Oh my god you're a doctor. Right. Oh you know right. what I mean right. and stuff. But and it also helps me with you know it, yeah because you see them and you remember limits, and you know yeah right and away. it limits the amount of emails I do of and, and then it's also hard, too yeah. they'll say to me like I'll say one thing and they'll say. Oh, but what about this? Like they don't understand. And sometimes you don't get that nuances and emails. You know what I, I mean? Agree. And stuff. Especially yeah, international yes. shows. Now I will yeah. tell you again this because some of the shows are really long. There's different parts of the country where they they the judges don't stay after. They will only do it by email. And then there's other parts that they will only stay after because the judges have full time jobs. And they have children and a, mm-hmm. yeah. and a life, mm-hmm. and they can't spend four or five hours. You know, a day answering mm-hmm. emails. So, so basically, it saves time, right? Yeah, for, yes. To do it. But for yeah. me, I always say to athletes, I yeah. like I said, I'd much yeah. rather talk and meet people. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. at the shows. Before we end this up, we wrap this up. I'm always curious if there is one element in every division that would be like this is a big no no. Like this, you push the boundaries too much. What would that be per division? Well, I think right now in, in bikini for me, yeah. it would be the conditioning. Okay. I, yeah, I'm a big mm-hmm. one on. I, well, I just said earlier, I mean, to me, I always tell, both men and women, I always think if you look at the, the, the names in our sport, like yourself, mm-hmm. and, and well, and, and Alina, you, it's full, and Phil Heath and, and Lee Hay, the full brown muscle bellies are mm-hmm. always going to serve you. Yes. And I, you know what I mean? Conditioning mm-hmm. is for one day. Mm-hmm. Building that muscle is going to serve you for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. Yeah. And yeah. stuff. So with bikini, you know, I think sometimes if you look at our pros, our pros are not as lean as sometimes I see the amateurs. Okay. Because you don't have, lots of times when they start, you don't have enough muscle. So you get 
you try mm -hmm. to get lean, lean, lean to show yeah. what you have. Yeah. yeah. Where if you take the time and take a step back and take a little bit more time to grow, mm -hmm. it, that's going to serve you well and you'll stay around. Uh, to me, I think you'll stay around a lot longer. Mm -hmm. You'll yeah. have a lot more longevity mm -hmm. in the sport. And that's in every division. So I always think sometimes we push the boundaries with the conditioning. Mm -hmm. And especially sometimes for women, because I think we always try mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. as leaner as we mm -hmm. can, you know what I mean, just in our normal life. So I think yeah. you know that comes to play a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, that's, I always think, I always, I'm always telling athletes, I think you don't want to sacrifice full muscle bellies mm -hmm. to get super conditioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. How well, about the figure division? It's, it's kind of, it's kind of the same thing. You don't, I think the biggest thing is, 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 especially once you get out of bikini, I'm not talking about wellness, but for like women, uh, figure and women's physique, it's trying to keep everything in in in, in symmetrical. Because yeah, you know you just yeah front, back front. Well, yeah, because it. you have yes. a lot of our girls that come from different sports, and so if they're mm -hmm. hockey and soccer and stuff, they come in with that lower mm -hmm. body. So now it's it's hard sometimes for women to fill out that upper body to match, mm -hmm. you know. And obviously that was. The, the reason that the hallmark, you know, the wellness is going to do so well because it's going to appeal to so many, so many, so many women. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great seeing you guys work and. Uh, oh, the women, the women wellness are. Oh the my first God. Miss Olympia, you know, wellness, and we were looking at the two and who they and I just think right on that your selection oh they're, choice. they're just but I mean was those perfect. top girls are just um, those they're legs amazing. the legs they're phenomenal oh, I keep telling them if they if they don't want their legs I'll take them any day of the A week phenomenal <laughs> they, yeah they oh just, I have one more question sure. that, uh, it's really it's really interests me and that is like somebody who downsizes right because we always talk about pushing pushing yeah. pushing how do you find that because most of the time when people downsize I feel like they lose some of that 3D effect of the muscle is I, that the case? What I you've think, noticed? I think again, I, that's almost harder than anything. And I will have to say, probably Kim Chavesky probably did it better than everybody. Didn't she? Uh -huh. Yeah, because she went all the way to figure yes. from bodybuilding. And, 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 but her skin, too. but her skin tone never changed. And I think part of that is obviously I think people's you know their own genetics and stuff. But I think you really need somebody that really understands the science of it, and and it depends on how long you've been. I think is big. Mm -hmm. because sometimes yeah, right. your skin won't tighten Come up back. no matter yes. what you do. That's right. um, but I, and again, sometimes it does, but I think there's, there's a, a really scientific way that you really want to bring that body down slowly mm -hmm. so that the skin has a, a chance to, you know, to adjust mm -hmm. to it. Because you see it even in young people sometimes. You, know, you see them and then they... they you know, they were they, they were a little bit you know too soft or whatever, and then they in the next two weeks they get a little bit tighter. But even mm -hmm. sometimes at a young age, that two weeks is too fast. You can see that the skin, even though they're in their twenties, it didn't have the time. You know yes. what I mean to, to oh, tighten yeah. back up. I mean it I will, but about. you know it sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think downsizing and downsizing symmetrically mm -hmm. is probably mm -hmm. you know if you talk to a mm -hmm. trainer probably one of the hardest things to do that's why i think everybody was so amazed when kim did it yeah and yeah. did it so i mean she did she did it, she so, did it well. so it's one well. of the very few she's one of the very few success stories yes mm -hmm. yeah because i think it's it, because it's that it's that difficult mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it is yeah. well linda what yep. a fountain of knowledge yes. we found yes, fountain <laughs> of knowledge and and you know, I just want to say thank you, thanks so much, Sandy. Oh my God, for I mean, you really, yes. truly, just because I mean, I think what's really awesome is I I know and I get to see where you guys, how you started to see your love and your passion, and you know, hey, well, I've gotten to know you what thirty some years. I know, it's crazy. I know, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Thanks when, for everything that you do. Thanks for being oh at, my that, God, thank at you. that table. And, and the women, they all want to say thank you. Oh, yes. They're on the stage, and then they get to look down, and you're looking and focused on them. Well, I That's will say important. one thing people ask me all the time, like some of the girls will say to me, what goes through your head when you're looking at it? And, and, and I swear to God, this is the truth. I'm looking up, and I'm going... I'd give my eye teeth for that body. I'd mm -hmm. give my eye teeth for that body. <laughs> I'll take last place on that stage and I would be the happiest person in the world. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, That's thank you. Funny. Thank you again for sharing your Oh my God, thank your, you. This was great. Knowledge this was awesome. Experience. I'm sure we're going to have future episodes because like, you have such an experience. I, I, I swear, I, I'm, an hour, I'm serious. I'm an hour flight. I'm more than happy to come. Well, Seriously, thank you so I really much. would. 
Thank you. Right. And it Thank was beautiful you. to have you here. Thank you. And it was beautiful to have you guys with us and catch us on our next episode of FemFlex Friday. Friday.